Hey everyone, this is Jason from Alphatone Audio, and we just wrapped up our five-part series of getting pedals mounted to your pedal board, and I just want to come back in and do a quick recap, go through all the methods really quickly one more time, do a little bit more comparisons from one method to the next, and point out a couple of things that I may have missed, or definitely missed, in the first round of videos. So, starting off in the order that we went, Velcro. Tons of reasons to like Velcro, tons of people use it, not a big surprise why. It's super simple. Box like this, you get it between as cheap as 20, as much as 30, depending on where you get it. One box of this, and you're pretty much done. This is a, this size box is gonna do a huge pedal board with some left over. A little bit of work up front to make sure the bottoms of your pedals and your pedal board surface is clean, but once you get past that, it should take you no time at all with a pair of scissors, get this stuff cut to length, get your pedals mounted down, done. Uh, for a lot of people, this is gonna be great, and it's all you're ever gonna need. One of the only things I don't particularly like about Velcro, well two, really, one, you do have to keep this clean, uh, or else you're just, if you take pedals on and off a lot, uh, you don't wanna get all kinds of junk and stuff mixed up into the Velcro because it's not gonna hold as well, so there, there would be a little bit of maintenance to that. But the other thing I, that I don't particularly like about it, it's not a deal breaker, but even with brand new Velcro, this is fresh and it's, it's gonna, hold as well as it's ever going to, you still just get a little bit of wiggle in the pedal after you put it on. Now again, not a big deal. It's not going to affect most players on most pedals. Uh, if you do like the mini pedals, which tend to be a little bit higher, so basically they're higher and they have a narrower base, you may get a little bit more of that wiggle. Again, it's not a deal breaker, but if you're looking for the most secure solution as far as what's going to keep your pedals from moving at all, Velcro is not going to be it. But again, lots of reasons to like Velcro. Uh, if you think it's going to work for you, chances are it will. Next up is Dual Lock. And I can say for sure that Dual Lock is my favorite out of all the methods here. Uh, for a lot of reasons. It, it's, it's easy. It, it's easy enough to get. I mean, chances are you won't get it locally. You'll have to get it online, but it's still easy enough. A couple days and it's at your doorstep. Um, but even though it's so similar to Velcro, there's a lot of features with Dual Lock that just lets it go above and beyond. One, the different stem densities that you can combine to change up the adhesion strength between your pedal and the pedal board. So if you swap out your pedals a lot, you could go with one of the stem densities that allows you to get them off easier. Uh, if you don't want to take your pedals off, you want them as secure as you can, you can go with a combination that has a lot more strength between the two pieces of Dual Lock. They have the regular version, they have the low profile version, they have two different types of adhesive for two different types of materials to make sure the dual lock is always gonna stick to what you put it on. Um, just, just lots of things. You, you can even mix and match up different combinations within a single pedal board. So for example, we talked about com combining the stem densities. You could use one for your pedals, which you may kind of take off or swap out from time to time, but on your power supply, for example, which maybe you just put on there and you never ever take off, you could use the strongest uh, connections they have and to make sure that power supply is never gonna come off. So you can really get creative with it, do a lot of different things. Plus the additional form factors, like we talked about on these mini pedals with these little small discs with no adhesive and you just screw them onto the bottom of your pedal. Great for mini pedals, or you could use them on all your pedals if you want, if you don't wanna get into adhesives and all the stuff that goes along with that. So lots of different form factors. Plus, two additional things I didn't really talk about the last time. One, unlike Velcro, where I showed that you could actually take that pedal and rock it back a little bit, just because Velcro is it's essentially it's a fabric, this is a hard plastic material. So when you put the pedal on there, there's no motion whatsoever when you put it on there. Because the hooks and the loops are flexible, these are, are not as much. So when you lock that in there and you hear that snap, this pedal, it does not twist, it does not rotate, it does not move at all. It's just a very, very secure feeling when you put the pedal down onto the pedal board. So if you don't want your pedals to move at all, this is gonna be great. The second thing that you can do with this is you can stack it. Now it's already a, a little on the thick side, uh, and I'm talking about the normal, not necessarily the, the low profile version of it. But what's, what's fairly common is if you have a pedal that's a little bit lower than your others and the switch, foot switch is a little bit hard to get to, you know, there's lots of people that use pedal board risers or maybe just stick an extra piece of plywood or something under, underneath the pedal to get it up a little bit higher, just so it's a little bit more accessible. Because dual lock is so rigid, 
you can stack layers of it to boost a pedal up. So basically just put one layer down, then you would flip another layer over, put it on top of that dual lock, peel that adhesive layer off, and then just stick another layer of dual lock on top of it. And even with just two layers of this, you're gonna get a fair amount of clearance on the bottom of that pedal to rise it up a little bit. And it, it sticks to itself very, very well. Just one more thing that you can do with dual lock. Really flexible solution. Uh, the only real downside is, one, again, you're probably not going to be able to find it locally at a hardware store or something. You'll have to get it online. And two, it is a bit pricey. I'd say probably twice as much as Velcro, if not just a little bit more depending on where you get it and how much you buy and all that. Uh, when, you, when you initially search for it, you're going to find a lot of those 50-yard rolls and you're going to see price tags of like three or $400. Just be careful when you do your shopping. Make sure you know which part number you're going to get. Again, I listed all the part numbers for Dual Lock in the Dual Lock video. Go take a look. Make sure you're getting the right part number and make sure you're only buying as much length as you need. Next up is the bolt method, where we took the bolts that held the backs of the pedals on, uh, took them out. We found longer versions, drilled holes in the pedal board, and then ran those bolts up through, bolting the pedal to the board. So we talk about security. This, this is about as good as you're going to get. Uh, the only thing that's going to take that pedal off is if you actually manage to strip out the threaded inserts that the four bolts go through. So if you don't ever want your pedals to come off, something like this you're going to want to consider. Uh, would you want to consider in the first place? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Do you like joining a lot of holes in your pedal board? That's fine. Now, I, I did a lot of these mini pedal boards out of wood. Can you do this on metal? Sure, you could do it on metal. No real difference. Uh, and even if you did, because the, the metal is probably going to be quite a bit thinner, than any wooden pedal board you're gonna get because they're at least gonna be a quarter inch thick. You may not even have to go out and buy new bolts. You could probably just reuse the existing ones. Now, of course, when you start to go and drill holes in your metal pedal board, I mean, that's a little bit more of an investment, uh, a little bit more difficult. You're probably not gonna want to be moving your pedals around a lot. You're just you're gonna have a Swiss cheese pedal board when you're done. And unlike a lot of wooden pedal boards, I guess you could technically just you know replace whatever wooden part that you drill through in case you want to start over again. Uh, cutting a part of a metal pedal board out is just really not going to be practical. So if you just say it requires a large level of commitment if you want to do this in metal, wood, not as big a deal, particularly if you're just building something at home, then I would just say go for it. Um, the only thing that's a bit of a pain is making sure that you find all the right bolt sizes. Just uh, go back, rewatch the video. Uh, remember those three concepts that I talked about with the bolts, which is the, the diameter, the length, and the thread pitch. As long as you keep those three things in mind, it should make it a little bit easier going forward. After that, we had the bike chain method, which, which honestly I think is a little bit weird. Uh, I'd probably, is it secure? Yes. Is it fairly easy? Yeah, it's not too bad. You have to drill holes in your pedal board. Again, you could do this on a metal pedal board, just like we talked about with the bolt method. Uh, it'd be really similar. It just instead of using screws, you're just gonna use bolts and a washer. But honestly, if you don't ha already have the tools, if you don't already have a bike chain and you don't wanna go get one and do all that cleanup and degreasing, all that kind of stuff, I I'd say there's no real huge advantage to doing this. I think the main reason you wanna do it is just from an aesthetic standpoint, if you just like that real DIY kind of look. And, and again, if you wanted to look a little bit more polished, I did link to some third-party products that would probably look a little bit better than a beat up, scratched bike chain. Anyway, I would say if you're actually thinking about doing this, I would actually consider using the bolt method first and just see how easy it would be for you to round up all the different bolts you need for your pedals. So again, bike chain, not, not a huge fan, but of course it is pretty secure. It, it does do less damage to your board than this method does because you don't really have to drill holes all the way through. That screw is gonna make a slightly smaller hole than that bolt. And it's gonna allow you to just move things around a little bit. Chances are, if you start moving pedals around a lot with this method, it, inevitably you're gonna find out that you have to drill a hole too close to an existing hole, and you're, then you're gonna have to get into washers on the bottom of the bolts and all that kind of stuff, and it's just a mess. So I would say if you're considering this, I would probably first take a look at the bolt method and see if that's gonna work for you. However, I mean, if that's just something you wanna do, knock yourself out. Last but not least, we have zip ties. Now, when I first did the video series, I, I wasn't even sure I was gonna include zip ties just because I couldn't think of enough compelling reasons as to why you'd wanna do this. I mean, yeah, it's easy and it's cheap and it's simple, low effort and all that kind of thing, but it doesn't work with a lot of pedals just because you get knobs and switches in the way and it's a method where you have to drill holes in your pedal board, but I don't feel that like the security payoff of the zip tie really justifies drilling the holes and you see stuff still tends to move around a little bit and I, I just didn't like it. I think the best way to explain whether you do this or not, 
and tell you about two different bands I saw this weekend. Now, the first one was a blues trio. And the guitar player was also the singer, and he had a really simple rig. He had a Strat plugged into a tuner, which was plugged into a tremolo, I believe, and it went straight into his amp. And that was it. He didn't even have his pedals in front of him, and he didn't have a pedal board. He had the two pedals sitting in front of his amp, and that was it. Between songs, like every two, three songs, he would go back, he would check his tuning. I saw him kick the tremolo on for one song. Then after the song was over, he walked back and he turned it off and that was it. Very straightforward. Those are probably the two only two pedals this guy has ever used in the past 20 years. And it's probably gonna be the only two pedals he's gonna use for the next 20 years. And again, like I said, he didn't even have a board. Simple is good. And if simple works for you, then stick with simple. Now again, just because I said I didn't really like this method, for some people this method is overkill. They can't even see a reason why they would do this much. On to another situation, the other band I saw, a little bit more of a contemporary band, um, the guitar player had three pedals. He had a multi-effects, and then he had, like I, I believe he had like a, a distortion or an overdrive, and he had a delay. And he was doing like a little bit of tap dancing. Like he was turning you know, certain pedals on for leads, turning other stuff on. Now, the problem with this guy is, one, he, they were not playing on a stage, so they're just on the floor with everyone else. There's drunk people dancing everywhere, possibly even myself, I, I don't quite remember. And he's moving around a lot, and he just had his pedals right on the floor where everyone else, but he didn't have a solid stage like the other guy, they were actually playing on a carpet. And he had one pedal on the carpet and another pedal off the carpet. And he didn't use a short uh, cable to plug the two together. He actually used a full length guitar cable and they were actually about two feet apart. And he would sometimes kick one or he would sometimes knock one over or sometimes he would go off the carpet and on the carpet, it'd be on an angle. And it may have been kicked by someone in the audience or could have easily been kicked by someone in the audience. And he probably needed a solution like this. And also just because it was on carpet, especially, you know, any kind of like soft surface like that, when you push on the pedal, the first thing it does before the button goes in is it actually has to sink down in the carpet a little bit before you push it. You just don't get a great feedback. It's, it's just a mess. A simple pedal board like this, which I've been using for all these examples, and I'm just, I just did these little mini pedal boards just to keep it easy and do the individual videos, but this could be your pedal board. That could be all you ever need. Now, if you're not using anything and you just have a couple of pedals on the floor, something like this may actually improve your situation greatly in that you can use a short little cable. This is never gonna get plugged in or unplugged, which means it's not gonna put wear and tear in your jacks or your cable. It's gonna be just secure enough that you're not gonna kick these around and, and move them around in any way. It's gonna give you enough support surface that if you do get on a soft stage surface, or what, what about all the musicians who are playing house concerts nowadays in some someone's living room on their ancient shag carpet? This is gonna give you enough support to make sure when you push down on the, on the, on the pedal, the pedal board is going to provide a solid surface that's going to be easy to turn, toggle these pedals on and off. So, again, if this is all you need, then that's all you need. It's very easy to get seduced nowadays with these huge pedal board rigs that people have and to add one more pedal and one more pedal and more and more and more. If you don't need it, don't do it. Again, if that's all you need, then you'll know that's all you need and that'll be a good solution for you. Okay, having said that, Really quick, talk about what's coming up next on the channel. So we have a bunch of pedals. Hopefully you've mounted your pedals in your board by now, but they're not, that's not good enough. Did with it just sitting there, we obviously need to plug them in. So we have a bunch of cable. I'm gonna talk about how you wanna do your own cables for your pedal board and what cable you might wanna use. And I have a bunch of quarter inch jacks, pancake jacks, right angle jacks, all that kind of stuff. We're gonna take a look at all the most common ones. We're gonna figure out which one's best. Hope this has been beneficial to you. Hope you learned something and I'll see you next time.